Hi there, and welcome to Jay's Permaculture Allotment. On this channel, I'll be covering all different permaculture techniques that when used together, actually create systems that will make both your plants and you a lot happier. Now with permaculture, we don't use any pesticides. Everything's natural, organic, working with nature rather than against it. I think people are starting to realize with their current situation that it's okay having a lawn, but it's not actually gonna put food on your table. So how about we turn even a section of your garden into a mini food forest and get some food on your table that has got so much more nutrition than what you'd buy in the shops. Straight from the plot, straight onto your table. You can use a lot of the permaculture techniques and principles no matter what size garden you have. Even if you've just got a little patio or even if you've got a balcony or a kitchen window, you can still use a lot of the same techniques, just changing the scale. Okay, so let's take you on a walk around the new food forest. Now this is a half plot allotment. So I took this one on at the end of January and it had been unused for about four, maybe five years. So you can imagine the state it was in and I'll actually show you a video clip of what it looked like before I did anything with it. And I think you'll agree it looks a little bit different now. Welcome to the new plant. Nice rose bush. Wild bramble. Some L star apple. Not sure what variety the middle apple is, but I know it's an apple. Cherry. I think this one's a plum. It actually doesn't say. Let's see what it says what this one is. The label is faded, but it's uh, another apple, it's golden one. Rocks. Okay, so this is the back of the plot. So this had more junk buried in it than anything else. There was carpets, there was mesh, there was bottles. There was things that I wouldn't even want to tell you were in here. <laughs> um, but the ground hadn't been used for many, many years. So it was basically dead ground. You wouldn't find any worm or anything in this ground. But since I took it on, I've added some mushroom compost and then I also added a deep layer of leaf mulch. So let's go around and show you what I've put in here. So this is just a St. John's wort, Peruvian black mint, lavender. Over here we've got some red Russian kale and we've got some marshmallow 
So yes, it's what the sweets used to be made from. Now this is an apple tree. It only went in, I say, this year. All of it went in this year. We've got a plant bush that I had to remove from the other plot. So that's why it's a little more mature. And here we've got some yakon, so that's going to grow tall. Lovely tuberous plant. Nice sunflower tops on them. So this one here is a tomato lychee. So it's actually a spiky tomato relative. So it has cherry type fruits but with spiky husks on them. So I've got some strawberries around the base of the trees. Got some hollyhocks. So these are all from seed. Some chamomile, which for some reason hasn't liked it there. Then this is some grape mullen. So it's a medicinal herb. Now because I don't like the view at the back of the plot, as you can see, I've actually got some poplars, so poplar trees planted in here. So they go along, I've got several of them in here. So that should actually give me a bit of a barrier from the other side of the plot. So I don't know if you can see in here, some kiwi. So these are ones that I actually grew from seed. So it'd be interesting to see how they do and if they do ever produce any fruit. If not, it'll still be an interesting experiment. So we've got a lupin here. So lupins, as you can see, the bees love them. But the other bonus of lupins is their nitrogen fixes. So they're actually putting nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen into the soil, which then other plants can benefit from. So there's another apple tree here, more strawberries. Now I also grew some apple trees from seed. So it'd be interesting just to see which ones do well. This one actually got attacked by a load of aphids and black flies. So it's, I sprayed it with a bit of neem oil. So hopefully it should be okay now. Got nice glow artichoke. Now the benefits of these is the leaves are nice and big so you can use them as mulch. So as they get bigger, you just take the bottom ones off and you can place them around the base of other plants and it gradually breaks down and puts nutrients back into the soil. So we've got some different squashes. So most of these around here are courgette type squashes. So we've got another kiwi here. This one's a plum tree, which again only went in this year, but it's doing really well. So oh, this is another one of my apple trees from seed. So this one wasn't attacked as much as the other one, so I think it's going to be a better specimen. Now the good thing with these is, even if when they fruit, if it turns out to be like it's reverted back to a crab apple, I can still graft onto it with my favourite varieties. So nothing lost. So, we've got more yakons, then we've got a fig, so I've got several varieties of figs scattered around. More Peruvian, right here. More Peruvian black mint. So this is canna edulis, so it's an edible canna. Again from seeds, so it'd be interesting to see how it does because they're, they're not ideal for a temperate climate. They'll grow, but I'm gonna see if we can overwinter them. 
Um, otherwise, what I'll have to do is dig up the tubers and protect them like you do with dahlias. Although over here, dahlias, I've had dahlias in the ground for several years that keep coming back. So here's another one of the poplars. Which is doing nicely. This is a catmint. So again, lots of different herbs for both medicinal, medicinal and culinary. And the edges, you've got some lesser plantain. These are all self-sown. They come up everywhere. But again, they have different medicinal uses. There's an elderberry that came up in with um, one of the dahlias that I planted. So I've just let that grow because I love elderberry. This is just a shrub so it will flower and again for the pollinators. We've got more marshmallow. Then we've got some calamint. So the calamint and the oregano look similar. The leaves are slightly different but all you've got to do is have a whiff and you can <laughs> Tell the difference instantly. So we've just got a mixture. There's a patch right here that's going to seed. I'm actually going to let it run to seed and drop its seeds so it can actually self sow. We've got red mustard also doing the same thing. This one here is a young American pawpaw. So it'd be interesting to see how that does. Edible looping. And then this one's Torton Dean Kale. So this is a perennial kale, really, really tasty. And this is just some shallots. So although it's a permaculture, mainly perennial system, because it's such a young food forest, there's lots of space to allow everything else to grow. So I've put in lots of annuals in between so we've got some tansy now tansy once it flowers it's got these lovely golden sort of button flowers that the pollinators love but this is brilliant um, as a compost accelerator so you can chop and drop and again place it around your plants or put it in with your compost and it helps it break down as an accelerator then as an experiment we've got some Chinese yams so these ones produce like little baubles that you can eat as well. And then you get the great big tubers underneath. So since they're Chinese, they should still be fine in our weather. Um, this one here, this actually went in last year in, the, um, in one of my raised beds. But it was too shaded, so it didn't do very well. But it came back to life this year. And the others are ones that I planted from the little baubles that you get. And you can see they're coming up too. So some red Russian kale, some peppers. Okay, so this one's a cornelian cherry. So the good thing about this one, it's not a normal type cherry. Uh, this one's also a nitrogen fixer. Then we've got tomato plants. Now this one is actually a determinate variety. So this one's silver fir tree. As you can see, it's flowering. And on some of the others, it's actually got tomatoes on. Again, small flowering shrubs. This one is a Peruvian hairy chili. So it'd be interesting, and that's supposed to be perennial as well. But I'm, I might have to dig it up and bring it into the polytunnel to see if I can overwinter it. And um, we've got some aubergines, so we'll see how they do. Um, this one is just a Roselle hibiscus. They've all been taking a battering from wind and rain, so hopefully they'll they'll pick up. So this was the fig that you can see from the other side. 
more slots. And we've got some purple dwarf beans. Tomato. I've got some garlic interplanted. They were just spare cloves that I had. That's room. Some parsley that I'm letting run to seed. And then these ones are just Welsh onions. They're just babies from seed at the moment. This is just where I had some daffodils in here early in the year. And then Dahlia. Some more garlic. And this is just Galadi. So again, the pollinators love that one. So that's one bed. Okay, let's do the smaller bed. So we've got some self-seeded poppies. But all the pollinators seem to love them, so I left them in. And what I'll do is I'll just cut them back once they finish flowering so I don't end up with the seeds everywhere. The lovely flowers on this one, that's the Clary Sage, which again is more medicinal. We've got all different herbs in between, so we've got oregano growing in between as well. But I'd say once I pull out these poppies, they'll all be fine. More tomatoes. More of the hairy chilies, more of the lupins. This is a, a red love apple tree. Now it flowered early in the year like all the other apple trees, but for some reason it's decided to send out some more flowers. The only problem with that is these are not self fertile and there's no other apple tree flowering at this time of year. So those ones I very much doubt will actually pollinate. Now again, these are all very young apple trees and they're going in this year, as you can see, but it's already got a couple of fruits on. And this is red love, so it's red fleshed. Then again, uh, Verbena bonarensis in here. That's another one for the pollinators. Then we've got some cucumbers. And interplanted with the cucumbers, we've got some dill, so it's a great companion plant. Okay, let's come around to a different plant. So this one, some of you will recognise. It's actually ochre, New Zealand yam. So they're tiny little uh, tubers, but they are citrus flavoured. You can eat them raw or cooked. We've got some lovely lemongrass. I love the smell of that. And this was just grown from seed. Now I know a lot of people seem to have a problem growing this, but for some reason it always germinates for me. I think it's a case of having uh, fresh seed on that as well. So more tomatoes, more beans, more aubergines. Okay. More tomatoes. Now you can see there are actually tomatoes growing on here. And this is the silver fir tree. So it's determinate, which means it's just a bush variety. It's not going to keep growing upwards. Some more peppers. Now this one that looks like grass is actually tiger nuts. So it's a tuberous grass. So I've been told they're delicious and they have a sort of like coconut flavour. So it'd be interesting to try those because I'm not a lover of things like peanuts. So this would be a, a good option for me, hopefully, because I love coconut. Another globe artichoke. These are all from seed from this year. So um, they grow pretty fast. Another red love apple tree. Some more lemongrass, aubergines. Ochre. So this one's a dwarf thornless blackberry. Some more cucumbers, 
model so this is crystal lemon cucumber this one whereas the other ones are beth alpha which are um, all females so you get just nothing but fruits on the other ones which is great it'll be interesting to see how they do because they're all being grown outside another fig this one's panache so this one's actually a striped fig so it's quite striking you can actually probably see even on the stems you've got all different shades which is really nice so um, this one is okra again hit, being hit by the cold and wet I've stunted them slightly but I'm hoping once the warm weather kicks back in they'll be fine there are more squashes a nice sage now this one I transferred from my other plot so it's a nice established one but it's grown well since I've transferred it more beans more kind of edulis another roselle hibiscus and this one you can actually use the flowers some chamomile that's a bit happier than some of the others some basil some more lemongrass now this tree here is a pluot which is a cross between a plum and an apricot so again where the weather keeps changing the, the leaves keep changing colour but I'm glad to see there's some more dark shades coming through more tomatoes this is a savoury that's going to seed well going to flower rather than seed so again it's all perennial another one that I transferred over more tomatoes basil again basil's a great companion plant for tomatoes the smell of it helps mask mask the smell of the tomatoes from insects that would normally want to munch on it so you've got another edible lupin some is looking a bit better than the others it's already got some pods forming this one produces large edible sweeter um, beans than the standard lupin so it's actually been uh, created for eating use so there's some more red russian kale Okay, next bed, some more chamomile. So nice fresh chamomile teas, some more garlic interplanted with the tomatoes, basil, some more ochre, some more beans, some more squash, the bean abonarensis. So these are Day lilies which have edible flowers actually I believe all of the day lily plant is edible but you might want to check that don't just take my word for it another galadia so the base so the apple tree that's here there was five fruit trees already on this half plot even though the rest of the plot was trashed and so that's why you can see it's already got some nice fruits on it it's only a dwarfing variety so it's been on here for years but the base has got heavy wood chip mulch so um which hasn't fully broken down so i can't really pull back and plant into it so i've got other plants that will help fill up and cover that section as well coming as soon as that's broken down or things that will trail across so got some more herbs here mm, oregano it's delicious with the roselle hibiscus 
more of the purple beans, some more of the red Russian kale. So this one's good King Henry. So it's a spinach alternative. But it's a perennial. So even when it goes to seed, you don't have to worry about it. It will spread if you want it to, if you don't cut the seeds back. But otherwise it's just clump forming, which is also good. So we've got another fig in here. So these are all young ones. There's lots more. Um, I think this one's shallots. Because I've got all different perennial onions growing as well. Actually, I think this is one of the perennial ones. Um, I'd have to check on my my list. Um, so this one's bubbleberry or fun berry. It's got lots of different names, but it looks like a comical strawberry when it's in fruit. It's like inflated, but again, nice perennial. But the thing with this one, unlike a strawberry, this has got little spikes on it. As you can see, it's got some nice flower buds on it. So again, they only went in this year. So I'm pleased that there's already some flower buds. So then we've got a dwarf. Um, I believe this one's the nectarine. No, it's actually the peach. Um, so I've got dwarf peach and dwarf nectarine. It's another squash. Nice big St. John's wort. Again, medicinal herb. So this is one that's supposed to be amazing for anxiety and stress. So I think a lot of people should be <laughs> growing this one at the moment. So this one's a variegated elderberry. It's actually called Madonna. So um, it's quite funny when I come up, because I tend to end up talking to my plants. So when I'm calling it Madonna, it sounds a bit funny when you're talking to a plant. Okay, so on these, these are bitter melon. Once again from seed. Now it's interesting, some Filipino friends of mine who have plots here have been trying for the last couple of years to grow these from seed, but can never uh, get them to, um, to grow. So they're ending up buying plants to actually go straight in the ground. So I was quite surprised that they had problems because these came straight up with no issue. So I'm not sure if it's just that they're not using enough seed. Some more aubergines, some more oreganos, some more yakon. So this one is Australian mountain pepper. So this one, if you've got both male and female, then they will actually produce peppercorns. Now, I've got several of these, but because you can't tell until they flower, whether they're male or female, I've ended up with, I think, four, but they're all male. So <laughs> that wasn't very helpful. So if I uh, find one that is female, it'll be beneficial. Another one of the savouries that's gone to flower. But again, the insects tend to love it. Now this is another one of the apple trees that was already here. But it didn't produce a single flower this year. So, um, hopefully giving itself a year's rest. I don't know if it actually gave a good harvest last year and ended up exhausting itself and needing a rest year. Um, so I'm wondering if that was the case. So it'd be interesting to see what it does next year. Again, lemon balms. Um, this one here is beetroots in here. So I just put a clump of four. So if you've ever watched Charles Dowding, um, he always multi sows things like beetroot and spring onions. He says they grow together well. So who am I to argue with him? And as say nature would automatically throw stuff out as a clump anyway, so it 
makes sense. So this one's a celery ac. Again, first time I've actually grown celery ac, so but I've just spotted a big slug near it. So please not. I'm so we should see how that goes. Um, I've got several spotted around. I've got some in with a tomato bed on one of my other plots as well. Another one of the black thornless um, black currants, uh, black roots, I should say. Another tomato. More of the onions. Okay, so another one of the spinach family. So this one's Caucasian spinach. Now this one's a climber and also perennial. So I've grown it from seed. So I did actually have it in the container a bit too long, which ended up sort of stunting it, but now it seems to have put on a, a bit of sudden growth. So I'm quite happy with that. Another one of the perennial lupin, uh, not perennial, edible lupins. Another celery ac. Some more deep roots. More aubergines. Some more okra. So this one's a uh, Pontilla terrific. So again, it produces uh, a mini cherry. But it's also a nitrogen fixer. And these ones are actually quite, they sort of got a sweet and sour. It's almost like a sherbet-y type flavor to them. So they're really nice. So I'm hoping over the next few years, this grows well and produces lots. Nice big lemon balm. Now, this is interesting because it's a Greek gigantes beans. Now, these are bigger than a butter bean. But, so they're a, a soup type bean they're not ones that you eat fresh from the pod now but uh, the Greek gigantes they have lovely pure white flowers now these are from my home save seeds because I grew some last year on my other plot but as you can see this is from the same lot of seeds but there's also some red flowers so it's on a separate plant, but from the same batch of beans. So they must have cross-pollinated somewhere along the line. So it'd be interesting to see what they throw out. Okay, now there have been no bonarensis. Parsley. So red currant bush. This one got really windswept. But it's held on to some of its red currants. I've got quite a lot of red currant bushes, so um, I've already harvested loads, but I don't mind the birds having some. This one's a plum tree. Again, this was already here, but it wasn't very happy, so I did cut it back a, a fair amount. Um, but it didn't produce a single flower this year. Now, I've got other varieties of plum that I've put in on my other plots, so... If it's the case that it needed cross-pollinating, it should be okay because they should be close enough to still cross-pollinate. More figs, more of the perennial onions. We've got a flower section. So at the moment, we've had tulips and things up in here. Um, some nice freesias. I should burn these because it's mum's favorite flower. So, um, yeah got a few other varieties of flowers coming up which you will see in future tours another red current now this one's a cherry tree again not sure what type of cherry I've already harvested majority of cherries from there there's still a few unless the birds yeah there's still a few on there uh, in the dents foliage of this and 
um, the back row here you've got a um, you've got canna edulis and then you've got yin yang beans in between and that goes the whole stretch along now they look like they need a bit more feed on some of them because the leaves are going a bit more yellow and since it's on the tail end they might not have got as much of the mushroom compost and leaf mold so um i sure had some homemade fertilizer uh, from the nettles and comfrey this was actually sent to me as a cutting last year along with a few others so i've just called it sandra fig because she didn't know what variety it was um, but it was a prolific fruiter so i'm hoping that we get some nice fruits over the coming years another greek gigantes and again you can see some white some red now this is a, a new berry on me um, this one's called a four berry as in the number four and this is the amber version So these go an amber colour, if I need a bit focus. Want it to focus, but you get the gist of it. Okay, and they're supposed to have a slight mango flavour to them, so again, will be interesting. Now this is another fourberry, but it's a black variety because the amber one, they say you get a better harvest if you have a different one to cross-pollinate. So um, I got the black variety as well. It's a much smaller plant, but it looks nice and healthy. Some more squashes and yet another fig. So it's a Peretta fig. As you can see from Lubera. More peppers, more tansy. Okay. So another Australian mountain pepper, more lemon balm, more edible lupins, peppers, aubergines. This is another apple tree that was already here. So as you can see, this one's got a lot more fruit on it. This is L Star, so it's the only one that still had a label on it that you could read. Um, but it looks lovely, so I'm pretty happy with that. It had a little bit of the um, mold on it earlier in the year, the powdery mildew. Um, but again, I sprayed it with a little bit of the neem oil and eco washing up liquid. It seemed to help a little. So this is a chocha. Let me see if I can find any. So if you look on the leaves, no, it's not cannabis. <laughs> I know it has that look to it. But you can see a little fruit here. So if you eat them while they're young, they actually have a cucumber type flavour to them. But if you wait until they're a little bit bigger they go more hollow and then they taste more like a pepper and then you can use them like a pepper as well which is how i actually prefer them so another peruvian plant but it seems a lot of the peruvian stuff does well over here more figs and strawberries tomatoes garlic more herbs more verbena more grape mullen from Gardens for Life in Ireland who also has a YouTube channel so I'll also tag him in this one and he has a shop so if you want to order any bits from him amazing guy great prices and he does a lot of the more unusual stuff so again this is a bush that was already here 
need to do some deadheading to help prolong the flowering. Some more yakons, beans, aubergines, more galadia, more parsley grain seed, more red currants, more okra, another squash. This one's a jujube fruit tree. So another more exotic one. Now this one you can either eat the fruit while it's still sort of a greenish tint to it and it has a crunch to it or you can actually let it dry on the tree and it becomes more like a date. And again, I believe these are actually a nitrogen fixture as well. Could be wrong, but I believe they are. Some more shallots. This we plant. That transfer, transferred over from the other plot. Another Australian mountain pepper. Some rhubarb. Again, that only went in this year. More shallots. And this is the other GGB, which has actually got flower buds on it. If I can get it to focus. Because the flower buds tend to appear. Let's see if I can look from here. Can you see the flower buds in between the leaf nodes? So it'd be exciting to see since this is their first year. It's more of the Tortum Dean Kale. So this is a goji berry. This is the amber goji berry. So it's more of an orange color rather than a red. And as you can see, it has actually got flower buds on it. Some of my gojis on the other plots have already got little berries forming. More young Welsh onions. And then I think I have one more bed. Let me take you over here. Hopefully I'm not making you feel too seasick. So this one is for my Merlin. So Merlin was a fox that used to always follow us around everywhere. So he was one of our friends. And he ended up having to be put to sleep because he got hit by a car and broke his jaw. So I put a little garden in just to remember him, being the softy that I am. So we've got Clary Sage. We've got red hot poker. We've got a little ochre in here. We've got peonies which have been smothered by the other plants at the moment. Another um, lesser plantain or ribwort. Nice dahlia. All my dahlias I've grown from seed, so it's really interesting to see because of the um, ones that I grew from seed last year actually flowered before the few that I did have as a tuber. So a rose, I believe this one was a white if I remember correctly. Small canna edulis, some more carnations, and then this is another unusual one. This is Apios which is another edible tuber um, but when it flowers um, it's got a real pretty flower um, in clusters so when you see that you'll think it looks like a wisteria and then a kind of edulis again being squished in there well i hope you enjoyed the tour if you did please feel free to like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification button for future videos.